Jetsons. Meet the Jetsons. They're a futuristic family. Yes, everyone's favourite, not the Flintstones, definitely not the Flintstones cartoon. Originally ran in the USA from 1962 to 1963. You may remember it from the updated version in the 1980s. Uh, I think it was a couple of series running from 85 to 87. And they also um, redid some of the original episodes with new titles and then also put those out. It's the Flintstones in space. And being Hanna-Barbera, of course, High Tech did a game. First advertised in 1991 but didn't get released until spring 1992. It was going to be a budget game, but then they put it out at their $6.99 and $12.99 on 16-bit range. Starting off on the CPC, just because I'm an Amstrad owner, so I thought that's where I'd start. So there we have the characters, George, Jane, Judy, Elroy, and there's a dog as well, but he's not in the game. As I mentioned, it's not a full price game, it's not a budget game. Came out at $6.99 on the 8 bits and came with a free poster. So there I am, George Jets, and I have to collect the money in order to be able to go on holiday, basically. So we're going to wander around the level, solve the puzzles, and collect the cash. So we enter a room here. There's some cash there. And I fall down a hole. Okay. Spectrum version. There are quite a few. It's a multi load on 48k. Seems to load all in one go on 128k though. There's quite a few um, Jetson games. Um, there was an Intellivision game in 1984. Uh, George Jetson and the Legend of Robotopia on the Amiga in 1990. A DOS game by George in Trouble again in 1990. And then we have this in 1992 as well as a NES and Game Boy. Jetsons game, separate games in the same year. On the specy, the music seems to speed up and slow down at random. And you can't... Oh, I've fallen down a hole again. I can't work out what's causing the slowdown and the speeding up. Usually there's more things like sprites on the screen that make games slow down, but the Jetsons seems to slow down when there's less going on on the screen. C64? And the, well, first of all, Shaw Jetson's backside strikes you as he walks along. Um, looks one like one of those American Instagram or TikTok people. And uh, George's sprite is high res and looks rather nice. There's some cash lying around there. And the house has gone mad. And for reasons I can't be bothered to find out. Oh, why? I've fallen into the basement again. I don't even know why. <laughs> the tube things, if you've seen the TV series, know to travel around. And here we are on the Atari ST. Uh, Mr. Spacely as as voiced by Mel Blanc. And uh, his last ever role, well not his last ever role, but he died during the production of the Jetsons movie in 1990. I've fallen down a hole again! I went into a room and the controls are so twitchy I didn't get time to correct. Amiga, we're in the room full of holes. There's some switches, so now I can randomly walk across there, set those switches off, and walk down here and get the cash. Now the thing is here, this has taken me about 20 attempts to work out what the path through the room actually is. So finally we're through that room, but I've fallen through to the basement as I say many, many times trying to find out what goes on in that room. And I've fallen down another hole! Which is just as I enter a room. The game doesn't need holes that throw you into the basement. As I say, there's multiple Jetsons games, and there's another PC game in the same year that most sites seem to have, and you need the high-tech version if for some reason you should happen to want to play this. Back on the ST. Another hole! 
<laughs> oh, how many times I've been in this basement now? I don't have a trainer for the ST version either, or the PC. So when I run out of lives on the ST, that's it. Oh, there's a lot of go uh, going back into rooms. And you have to get a very precise point in order to enter the next room. And oh yeah, did I mention that if you complete a puzzle, like this one, it doesn't remember. So you have to... You have to do it all again every time. Ah, oh, falling down the hole again! Oh! Interactive version, we have three screens along. You don't want to go on the conveyor belt and fall into the hole, because guess where they'll end up? Bit of energy for me there. Uh, Crash gave this 85%. Um, and they also seem to have lots of screenshots, oddly, of the later levels. Now, the thing is that your Sinclair gave it 50% and said they couldn't get off the first level. So, uh, yeah, on the PC version. So, yeah, I'm thinking that Crash might have had access to the later levels and based their score on that. Interesting. On the PC version, I appear to be able to walk over those holes without falling back to the basement. But I can tell you, on the 8-bits, you will fall back to the basement. Cellar, if you will. Oh, it's all uh, very annoying. I have got my ad-lib plugged in. There is no sound other than PC Beeper. Unless that's just my hacked version that only has PC Beeper. Amstrad version. And let's find out what happens when you fall down the hole. Look, we're back at the basement. We're about 10 screens back now. And we've got to do all those puzzles again. Should you get this far, and instantly, now that your Sinclair or Amstrad action did, you're going to level two where you travel through space in your Jetson space ship thing. And you can go back and forth and press fire to speed up. You have to collect the cash. Your Sinclair were quite looking forward to the game and they said, 10 o'clock in the morning and it was the first disappointment of their day. A disappointing cartoon collect them up with lacking playability. C64 flying through the space section. And if you're too slow, Mr. Spacely or someone comes up behind you and takes all your money and it's game over. But there's no indication of when that might be. On the Amiga. And I've fallen down a black hole, so it's game over. Great. Level 2, you are Judy Jetson. And it's very similar to level 1, basically. You wander around, picking up cash and solving a puzzle. In this case, your house has got a burglar in it, so you need to get your robot dog in order to chase the burglar off. C64 version. Zap gave this 90%. Uh, Commodore Format, however, gave it 39%. <laughs> I wonder what's going on at your press with their favourable reviews of Jetsons in both Zap and Crash. So, you'll get these split screen sections where the baddies are only visible when you're in the relevant section of the screen. And when you cross the boundary, they disappear and they're always respawn back at the same place. The game might memorise where they are, which makes it rather annoying. Back on the Amiga, and there's a garden section and some rubbish <laughs> doing a round section. Then we come down to something that could be a kitchen where there are cracks in the floor that slow you down for reasons I don't understand. I have no idea. Amiga format, 29% avoid at all costs. Back on the Spectrum in the garden section of level, well, three. And that's slowing down thinking. The worst review is from Amsterdam Action, who gave it 10%. They say, has anyone got off level one? We couldn't find anyone. And uh, Amsterdam Action co-opted uh, Stuart Campbell from Mega Power, 
someone from a Sega magazine and Linda Barker from Your Sinclair to give the game a go. It's It's got... It's design issues with this game, isn't it? The between level section, or between main level sections, actually work a bit better. So again, on 64 here, another level with the daughter of the Jetsons. Can't remember her name. Again, you have to on this level you have to collect money and hearts for some reason. There's a heart there beating away. Hungry Robin. There's a balloon thing that follows you around. It's just the unfairness of the game. Insta death when you walk onto screens, being thrown back miles and miles. Chili Vision plays rubbish like this, so you don't have to. If you want to see a few exclusives and get previews of upcoming videos, you can always join Chili Vision's Patreon. That keeps this channel ad free for as long as YouTube allows it. Details in the description below, or just type into your favourite search engine Chili Vision Patreon, or Patreon if you will. Spectrum version. Reminds me of the bowling in the Flintstone game. You're almost pining for the Flintstones game when you're playing this. Why did I die? <laughs> Why? Why was that another hole? I must be. I've been thrown back here. The 16 bit versions have these nice intermission screens between levels showing the characters baby, baby. usually in these high-tech games faithfully recreated from original Hanna-Barbera artwork provided to them and we have more conveyor belts and wandering around the dog is featured at the top of this screen but I don't think it features in the game you have that little robot dog, but I don't think it's the same thing. Oh, oh. Hang on. Chess pieces and conveyor belts. Is this a... Are we playing the <laughs> game of the musical chess? It was a hole. It was a hole on the edge of that screen that I went through on the Spectrum version, because I've just done it again. C64. There's a man playing a guitar there. Is it the pop star? Baby, baby. No, I just died. What is going on? Is that some... Was it an armed baddie and not a pop star? I've got no idea. I just died for seemingly no reason. Spectrum version, which is very magenta. And we're now Elroy. And this is the Amstrad version. With a... A Kenny Everett head in a hat wandering around at the top of the screen there. And you can't walk between these... Seats. I'm gonna, yeah, they're seats, aren't they? So you have to get past the Kenny Everett monster. Which respawns in a different place every time you cross the boundary of the screen. There's a lot of awkwardness in the Jetsons on all the versions. Difficult to navigate furniture, only being able to leave the screens at certain points. Oh, he's fast! But at least I can get past him. And I have a key. This level is very dependent on keys you need to get through to the next section. There's always a big sausage in there with a hat on. Across between Mr. So a sausage and Mr. Bronson from Grange Hill. More conveyor belts. Travelators. Travelators. They are travelators. I know somebody who, it is claimed, and he denies this, once created an international incident via the Travelators with some students whilst escorting them at Euro Disney. He completely denies this. Right, so here we are in the Amiga. Well done, El Roy. You've cheated your way to the end of this level, just like you have done every level since level one. And it's a spaceship level, and you get another spaceship level, and then you get a well done, everyone. Game over, enjoy your vacation, at least on the Spectrum here. And on the Amiga, well done, you made it home in time. Well, that was something we all experienced together, and mainly I suffered it, so you never actually have to play it. 
Goodness me, it's a game that actually looks and sounds okay. The problem is the implementation. All the versions play pretty much the same and look good for their respective versions. It's the thing High Tech had to do, but Hanna-Barbera insisted their games looked and sounded good. The problem is they didn't insist on anything beyond that and therefore what you get is a game that's had a lot of time spent on the graphics and the sound but then what happens is no effort has gone into the game design itself and it's all horribly flawed constantly falling through holes on level one and level whatever the daughter's level is five falling through holes getting thrown right back to the basement and to work your way through again and having to do all the, all the puzzles again it's just nuts he doesn't need it. Why the holes? The game doesn't need it. You could just wander around and find the things and it'd be much better. But the game's got so many just things thrown in, presumably to make it harder. I don't know. Just wondering what the programmers are thinking because without those holes and those unfair placement of things happening, this would actually be a far better game. You start clicking the switches to deactivate the holes. It doesn't show you which holes you deactivated, so it becomes a memory test of falling down a hole, going back, doing the same thing again, getting a bit further, falling down another hole, and so on. It's completely and utterly nuts. The most frustrating thing about the Jetsons is there's nothing original here, but they stood a chance of making a half-decent mid-priced game here that would have given you decent value for money and decent gameplay and a decent longevity. But they've made some really seriously stupid design decisions when making the game. I could go through all the different versions, but I really can't split them because for your respective system, they do a fairly average job on all of it. There's no really different things. You can't say, oh, the Amstrad version is really clunky or the ST version is slow. No, they all play fine. And it's a game completely ruined, not by bad programming, not by bad graphics or sound, but by seriously faulty game design. And the most frustrating thing is it could have been so easily fixed. Yeah.